Okay, go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so welcome everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order at 7.05. This is the Historic District Commission's uh, public forum and meeting on the uh, second forum on the potential expansion of the Historic District. I'm going to introduce everybody. I'm Amy Ritterbush. I'm the chair. This is Melanie Smith. Mike Allen. Beth Kelly. Beth Watson. Jeanette Thompson. So as um, you probably are all property owners in the district and you got our letter and a survey, and so we're just exploring a potential expansion of the district. We're at the beginning of a process. Um, we want to get everyone's feedback. We could change what we recommend. We could modify the by try to modify the by bylaw if, if that's what people want. We could reduce the expansion. We could not expand. We could delay. A, so we would like to hear from everybody. This is a process. and. Let's see, and the timeline is, let's see, so when we f after we finish our forums and look at the surveys, we'll try to decide how we want to move forward, whether to proceed for this year's town meeting or a different town meeting or to abandon it. Let's see, we would also have to submit a report to the Massachusetts Historical Commission, have another public hearing, and then it would be voted on at town meeting, which would be a two-thirds vote, so everybody would be able to come vote a town meeting, too. So is there um, anything else that we want to add before we open it up to the public? Okay, so we're going to ask members of the public to come up to the mic because this is recorded for HCAM. And, and if you have questions or comments, um, we'd love to hear from you. I, I can, um, it, would it be helpful if I went over some of the things we talked about last time? A lot of you were here last time. Okay. Yes, would. Okay. Okay. These are just the properties in the district. Uh, let's see. So these are um, some examples of what is reviewed by the Historic District Commission and what is not. So we review exterior architectural features visible from a public way in the district. We review color of paint only if it's a new color. We don't review it if the color is white or the same color as it was before. Let's see, we don't review re um, interior changes, routine maintenance, temporary signs, walks, driveways, or sidewalks if they're the same type. We don't review storm windows and doors, screen doors, windows, antennae, and other appurtenances. But some things, the bylaw was created in 1979, and so some things, did, like solar panels, didn't really exist much, or they were very rare back then. So that's not in the bylaw, and we might want to add that somewhere, that they'd be exempt or not exempt. Um, I would want to go over a little bit the difference between things in town that are historic versus in the historic district. If something is in town and it is uh, a building or structure, it's more than 75 years old, um, there's no review of any exterior changes visible from Lily Street, the street, but if they apply for a demolition permit, then it would be reviewed by the Historical Commission, who would determine whether it was preferably preserved or not, and in that case they could impose a six-month demolition delay, but once the six months were done, it could just be demolished, and there would be no design review of any new structures built after a demolition. If the property is in the historic district, which right now the downtown district is about 25 properties, um, we provide design review of exterior changes visible from the street, including demolitions, but only in the historic district. And there's also a Woodville historic district, but we're not um, on that committee. That's a different committee. And we can either grant a certificate of, appropri of appropriateness, which is um, if it's a change but that we feel that it's appropriate for the district, a uh, certificate of non-applicability, whether maybe they're just re uh, replacing it with the same material as before, like the same col color roof, same material, or a certificate of hardship, where it's not really appropriate for the district, but that's the best that can be done to still preserve the structure. Like adding a fire escape so that a building can be used and would be safe, but it wouldn't really be appropriate. And or if it's a significant economic of hardship for the property owner, we could issue a certificate of hardship. We could also do that in an emergency situation. And our decision still stands after six months, but if we were to deny something, they could be, feel free to reapply. But usually what happens is we come to a negotiation and it all, usually all works out. Um, the process is you, they fill out an online or paper form. There's no fee to do this. And they apply for a certificate of appropriateness, a certificate of non-applicability, or a certificate of hardship. After we receive an application, we have to meet within 14 days to decide whether it's under our jurisdiction, whether or not we need to pu hold a public hearing. So if a public hearing is needed, we need to give at least 14 days notice to the owners of adjoining property, and the town pays for the mailing, the, the property owner does not pay. And then after the public hearing, and at a maximum within 60 days, we have to make a decision, and if we don't make a decision, it's automatically allowed. Um, 
let's see, and if, and if a public hearing is not needed, if it's a very small change, we do notify the adjoining property owners, and then 10 days elapsed before the decision is final. We've had a few this year that we did, we had, what was that, the planters on the common, just replacing them with a new type. Um, I feel like there was another one too. Uh, gutters maybe. This is a little bit about the definition of the types of certificates that we issue. I think I already explained those before. And then I did look up the studies that impact property values. Um, most studies indicate that, um, that property values increase in historic districts rather than decrease. And there's a couple of links that you can read if you want. Um, are there grants available? Um, so there, let's see. This, is, this one is a little complicated. Uh, let's see. There's no specific state programs that provide financial assistance to owner-occupied historic homes, but they could qualify for CPA funding, which Hopkinton does participate in the CPA. Uh, but I don't know that this has ever been done before, so it would be new to see if CPC would be open to that or not. Um, so in return, the homeowner may need to enact a, an historic preservation restriction or easement on the property uh, if, the, if town funds were used. Private foundation grants may also be possible if it's a significant, if the property is significant, and there are restoration tax credits available, federal t tax credits. We asked specifically about the Presbyterian Church of, um, clock tower restoration, and, we said, and that was very tricky. She's, Elaine Lazarus said that CPA funds might be available, but the use of funds for religious institutions has been the subject of, litiga subject of litigation, and she wasn't sure quite where, how that stood, so that would require a little further investigation. Uh, all right, I think, I think that's all I have for now. So I, we're going to review a sign for the, the Hopping and Gourmet next week. They're getting a new sign. But... Okay, um, so I think if you have any questions or comments, please come to the mic and state your name and address, and we'll do our best to answer if we can, or just listen. <laughs> and I for, did, can someone be a note taker to write on the sheets if we have questions that we want to answer? Good writing? Mike? No, I'm terrible. Writing. Who's got better handwriting? <laughs> okay. I'm Terry. I'm 17 Maple. I'm in the district that is being changed, if it does. Um, just, just a couple of things, a couple of questions to your presentation, maybe. Like, if, if it has certain types of windows, like 6 over 6 uh, in the old house, is that is that you have to stay with that character of the, of the older houses like that. Are you going to? You say you're only doing the outside. You're not doing it. Would that be considered inside or outside? I think windows, out, windows are considered outside if they can be seen from the street. But your back windows would not be. And your property is set really far back from the street. I'm not so. talking about. Oh myself. yeah. Oh, in general. I, I'm just talking for the whole town. In fact, I, I'm not even. I have no bearing on this. I have no dog in the fight. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the, the what's, what's, uh, what's so, going to happen, what might happen, what might not happen. So windows in the front of a house visible from the public way would come under our review, and we could discuss with the homeowner the solution. If they were so rotten they couldn't be replaced, we could just issue a certificate to maybe replace with a vinyl but a similar design. Would they? Well, my question was, would they have to be the same style as they were before? They would, that's pref preferable, but you can't always get the same style as before. So they would come to us, and we would discuss what would be the best option. And when they come to you to have a have a uh, discussion on a subject, any subject, um, they have to have a plan with them, and uh, probably maybe an architect and an attorney. Most people don't bring an architect or an attorney. It really depends on, like the library project did. That was a huge project, but uh, most homeowners don't. They just maybe bring a sample or a brochure from the company they're planning to use. Because sometimes when you, when you go to the uh, planning board or you go to the building inspector, uh, you might have to have, have somebody with you to, to explain a plan or something like that. Uh, okay, probably not. Well, is there any appeal process to your decision making? I think any decision can be appealed by the Board of Appeals. Do you want to write that as a question, though? Um, 
it can be appealed to the Board of Appeals? I believe so, but we can confirm that. Well, presently, I think the way it, uh, something goes to the Board of Appeals is the building inspector has to turn it down. And if he turns it down, that triggers a, an application to the Board of Appeals if they choose. Right. So I'm wondering if you would, uh, if that would apply. In other words, the Board of Appeals could overrule you at any time. I believe you, you so, actually, but... As long as I've been on the board, we've never yeah. had anybody yeah. appeal anything. So I, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. <laughs> well, as long as I've been in town, I haven't had any problem with people coloring their houses, but that doesn't mean we're not talking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... So a lot of towns don't review paint color because, you know, even if somebody does paint their color something that's not historically appropriate, it can always be changed later. It's not a permanent alteration of the fixture. Well, there are a few things that uh, the planning board, uh, you as you're a member of the planning board, Amy, um, you're taking up some zoning on the multifamilies, aren't you? At, uh, remember at the last town meeting? Last town meeting it did There was uh, something said at the town meeting that, that would brought, be brought up in one of the meetings as a, as a, stu as a study this, this fall. As it been, a presentation might be made at the next town meeting because I remember it was voted on and it, was, it, it, it lost because of a, it didn't have the two-thirds vote. Uh, I think that's right. That it was a zoning bylaw change that didn't pass. Is, yeah. the, is the planning board in, got something in the works I'm concerned about the two-family houses or the single-family houses that an older person might own and they want to put an apartment in there or uh, an in-law apartment or, or just turn it into a two-family house. So, uh, and I'm also concerned about the fact that it might require a second egress, which would mean outside staircase. Would that mm -hmm. be something that would, would stop the whole project? Because that's changing the, the physical uh, looks of the house from outside. So if that exterior staircase was visible from the street, we would review it, and we might decide that that was an appropriate use or a certificate of hardship, really, because it was the way to preserve the building by adding the staircase, or we could decide that it was not appropriate and deny it. Uh, Sounds a little ambiguous. Yeah. Well, because they come before us and we discuss. Yeah. Um, I think you're opening a can of worms is what I'm saying. One, okay. of the things, one of the things we want to do as part of this is really define what our criteria are and what we look at and what options you have for doing things. And, and we're trying to work on that now. That's doing a lot of work on that now. And we're hoping to clarify, not confuse. Well, I, I've owned uh, multifamily houses in town for... 40 or 50 years or whatever. I don't own any pres presently now, but I did. And uh, we never had a problem with any, any, any situations with, with that. Uh, and it just seems as though um, as as problems in town, I don't see why the planning, the uh, building inspector, the two of them, the office that they have, and the new town planner, uh, I don't see why, why this situation exists, what you're, you're uh, trying to do right now, because I really don't see a problem. I mean, we've, said, we've had a bunch of houses that have been uh, remodeled going up Grove Street. There's four or five of them up there. They come out beautiful. I agree. They're selling for $900,000. They've got a great tax base. They were paying on $200,000. And they got insulation now. They've got new windows and everything. But it might be that that developer that did that might say, oh, wait a minute, I've got to go through a, a board uh, that's going to tell me a historical board. But the guy might just walk away. I don't think it's good for the economics of the town. Right, but I, I use those examples, those one on Grove Street all the time. The, the, the two they did on Grove between Price and Maple are spectacular. And they did them with current materials, but they look historically significant. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to protect... We're, almost, we're protecting them from tearing it down and building something that doesn't fit the neighborhood. So... Well, why would someone do that? We haven't had one person do it yet. My aunt's house on Grove Street is questionable. 36 Grove. That, I mean, that house is beautiful, and they did a very nice job, and it... The one that Brian Gassett just yeah, built? Yeah. It's one of the most beautiful houses in Hopkins. But it doesn't, fit, it doesn't fit the neighborhood. It doesn't? No. It's too big. 
It has, it has, it has, it has, it has a country characteristic. The history of this town, the architectural history of this town, doesn't exist, other than the fact that we're like every other town. We don't have anything special. We don't have any great buildings danger of being torn down or anything like that. And the town, the town has, a, has a nice little character, and some are big and some are small, and I don't think we have, I think we're, we're dealing with a problem that we don't have. So, I, back to the building inspector. I think we have two good building inspectors. I think they can take any situation. They might need some counseling from your board. If you were to make a counsel to them and, and, and ask them if they could maybe, be, maybe while they were talking to people who had, some of the builders especially, they might say, would you mind not putting this modern wing over here because that's, that's not in keeping? Would you, would you mind doing something more colonial? And if the building inspectors had a little bit, not so much enforcement of it, but at least a suggestion of it in the back of their minds, I think all these problems would be taken care of. Because I can see this situation now. You got, you're going from like nine houses to probably 20 to 100 houses in this new section, around 100? We have 25 now. And, well, um, not houses. I'm talking about residences. You don't have 25. Now you get nine. Oh, some are commercial, yeah. You get nine. Yeah. And you're going to about 100. And you're not including Grove Street from your house up to Kenny's gas station. You're not including any of uh, uh, Pleasant Street going down that way. Uh, you're not including some of Pike and Fenton. Pike and... Uh, Holt, yeah. and Summer Street, and down around by the cemetery, and out, out that way, and down Main Street to, to the Lumberyard, that isn't being included. But I can see that as phase two next year, or not next year, maybe two or three, as if this works. It, and then the next thing, Woodville's going to say, well, we had a, we got one a historic district over in Hopkins, we might as well get one in Woodville. So Woodville puts one in. Well, the they, have, the, they do have one in Woodville. Sure, they could. Yeah. They have, well, they have one. They'd have to, yeah, if they could justify it. And no, it's already there. There's one in Woodville. There's a historic district in Woodville. Yeah, but they could enlarge it. Oh, and make it, it, make it, what I'm saying is make it sure. all yeah. encompassing, like this one kind of does. It's going, I think it's going to. Now, if you did those areas, you would end up with the town being probably 60% covered. So you might as well do the rest of the town and make the whole town historic. <laughs> Because there is no problem. And the, the building inspector, it's just a double step for the homeowner that comes in and doesn't, doesn't want to have to pay for, to have counsel with him, but he has to, has to have more red tape, so to speak. And it's just, it's just something that I think, uh, I think it's unnecessary. I just uh, hope you would Do you want to write that as a suggestion? Could the building inspector provide historic design review? rather than a commission? I think if I could just say something that uh, we've owned our house for 42 years in the historic district and I've been on this committee for at least 25 years and I can only think of one time when there was any problem and it was resolved and our committee has always been the building a committee design of design review. compromise. Yeah. We do, uh, we're not here to dictate things. In fact, I think if you ever spoke to the people who own number one Ash Street, and I have to compliment Jeanette, they were questioning, um, they wanted to change the color, it was white with black shutters, but they weren't quite sure what they should do. And being that we have to have an architect on this committee, and we're lucky to have Jeanette, Jeanette helped them select the colors that are now on that building and have been there for at least 15 years. So we're here to be helpful. And you have to remember, we do not care what's going on in the building. So if it's approved for two family, fine. That's none of our business. You want to remodel your kitchen, fine. It's only what can be seen from the public way. And so that kind of limits uh, things. You know, they're not gonna go around in your backyard and see that you're adding a shed or something of that sort. So I have to defend the Historic District Commission. 
I think we have been helpful, even with the library. You know, there were many suggestions that Claire Wright, people on this committee, asked, were asked by the architect. And um, I think the library turned out beautifully because it was a project of um, collaboration. And that's, that's what this committee does. We collaborate with Beth, the I owners. I hope you didn't take me wrong. I'm not criticizing no, anything no. you've done. No, I just not to explain, criticizing kind of. criticizing any of your thoughts of what you might be thinking of doing. I'm just asking for a little more thought. You did bring up the, the, uh, the word uh, of uh, shutters on, on a house. Is that something that might be required? Because we had a big fight when I built my house 10 years ago. My wife didn't want shutters, and I did. <laughs> and I lost. Shutters? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I could have guessed that. So would you actually be making a decision on things as little as shutters? Well, it depends on if, if there were shutters on the house and you wanted to change the color or the style, yes, you would come to this committee. And that's why we have an architect here who, Jeanette, is not going to do something No, I know. She, had the house, she did the house up on the corner of yeah. Hayden Row and in Pike Street. There's no shutters. But right. the next, she's, I'm sure she's done houses with shutters. It's all about she asked the homeowner if they'd like the shutters. And they, and they said, yeah, we want the shutters. Yeah. It shouldn't be at the historical commission that tells you. Uh, I, don't th I think it's more of um, keeping a character of a house. So if a house doesn't have shutters now and somebody wants to add them, and it certainly keeps within the character of it, that's fine for the homeowner. And you would just breeze right through. If somebody wants to take shutters off, and it's not detracting from the character of the house, I think that would be fine as well. So we're not necessarily here to say to somebody, you don't have shutters on your house, we want to see shutters. It's really just a matter of, is it keeping with the character of a house, I think. So I don't think we're dictating yes or no. If a homeowner doesn't want shutters, and they show you a house that it fits with the character, I think that's what we're, you know, that's what we're looking for versus saying, yes, you must have shutters, or no, you can't have shutters. If you had shutters and you were going to rebuild, right? You might want to rebuild and not put in shutters. shutters on. Right. So right. where do you come in? Yeah. And that's where it's that's up to the homeowner. Right. Let, the, and let the people decide. This well, is a village. A, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I think there's a lot of older houses that at one point had shutters, and people have taken them off, and they're, they're still fine. You know, it, I think that's. You know, I think it's more if somebody has a house that has character to it, whether it's a colonial or one of the little village Victorians. If somebody wants to come on and put some very modern stainless steel front portico on it, that we might have an issue with because that is no longer within the character. But other than that, I don't think we're looking to dictate house styles. You know, so it's it's really the extreme that we're trying to make sure doesn't happen because it can happen if there's not people kind of watching it again it's, it's preserving the character of how something fits with the neighborhood and that doesn't mean that you don't take a smaller house and even go up a second story because that can all still be done fitting with the character of the neighborhood just like they did on Grove Street on those two houses I mean those things went up a little bit but they did it all with mean walls and shed dormers and things to keep proportions down versus just doing a, a straightforward you know nine foot nine foot box on the top and that's that so I think that's, yeah, but that's exactly my point Jeanette yeah they did that by themselves right right I mean they felt yeah. good about it they made yeah. those decisions yeah, they didn't yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, to make yeah. a decision for right. I mean, it, it, it would be true. But if those houses were being built today, yes, they would have to come in front of this board. It's an extra step. And we would review it, just like the, the house that's on the corner of, um, what is it, Park and Ash, that I did a couple of years ago. Again, kept the character, but we had to go in front of Historic and say, here's what we're doing. I think that house had shutters, and we took the shutters off because the homeowner didn't want it. But it was literally, it was really a, a process. You know, yes, there is another step in the process, it was reviewed, it was signed off, and the homeowner moved along. So it, it's, you know, it's not like you're going to the Zoning Board of Appeals and you're asking for relief on something or a special permit or a variance. It's really a board that's reviewing, similar to what we do now, is it okay? Is it, is it keeping uh, the character of Hopkinton? One other thing, and then I'll leave you. Um, um, I was going to ask it about Amy. Had to do with the planning board. Oh yeah, is the planning board? Is are you thinking of this board thinking of this as phase one, or 
of, of like I mentioned, the other sections of town, the, the other the other half of the main area of town, which is also just as historic. So There's nothing more historic about this side of town than the other side, and you're only doing yeah. one side of town now. So you're absolutely right that we did not want to. It's already a pretty big expansion that we're considering, so we didn't. We had to stop somewhere, I think, because the old high school is very historic, and we kind of would like to include that too. But we we just couldn't go too far. And I think was it in your plan? Was it discussed that we would do maybe do this half down and then come back later and do the other half? Well, we discussed that we wanted to hear from the public first because even this one might not go through or it might not be as big. So we might just do one small area at a time. Because in yeah. survey results so far, the people on the A Street, Claflin Street area seemed more interested than some other neighborhoods. So an option would be to just do that area right now and think about it think later. We, I think uh, a good question would be for the Historic Commission because they're the ones that came up with with um, the scope of the study and the area. <coughs> um, and that's in a lot of historic commission, but I, it was before I, I'm new. I don't know what their decision making process it, it did start with we had a consultant in 1989 and again in 19, 2016 that recommended this, this area just near the, near the current district but expanded. So that's how we started with this area for an expansion. And one of the consultants recommended doing over by the cemeteries, or I don't think they've recommended doing the old high school either, which is surprising. You had a consultant on this before? Is that what, I couldn't understand what you're saying. Oh, talking. yeah. In 1989, the town had a consultant do a study, and then again in 2016, they had a consultant. What was the results of that study? So, um, let's see. Do we have it printed out? Um, the, hold on. Did it have to do with the, just what you're doing now? Yeah, well, recommendations for historic preservation in Hopkinton going right. forward, like key, key areas to try to preserve. So you don't know what happened? Well, I have a copy of it. It's like hundreds of pages. Yeah, so I can... Well, I you wouldn't have made your decision, would you? But to form this... this, this no, no, we would not have. No, without well, the impact. We haven't made a decision. Right, there's no decision yet. Yeah. I mean, we were yeah. making a proposal, but yeah. really asking, does the town want this? I mean, we don't, we don't get to say we're going to do this. I mean, the town has to agree. We're just saying... We would be willing to expand the district and protect some of the older homes in town if the townspeople want it. If they don't want it, they don't want it. The reason I was asking this question is because I know this questionnaire only went down out to the people who were affected. Mm -hmm. I thought the questionnaire should have gone out to all the townspeople because eventually they're going to be, they're going to be uh, affected, in my opinion. If this, if this works, and I'm not, I'm not sure it's going to work. Okay. Yeah, no. I'm not sure. One thing to note, the, the library is a pretty decent example that that library was nothing like it looked before other than the, the facade. And, and the connector is actually improved, in my opinion, over the concrete structure that was there before. We didn't prohibit them from doing much of anything. They were allowed to build a library that is substantially bigger than it was, but it reserved the, the main street look as best we could while keeping their ability
downtown New York builder has spent three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand buying new houses, tearing down and, and building something that's in capacity that will be embarrassed by. So if it be a very easy to work with. That being said, it's not always been that way. And that being said, you know, it's going to be on the board. Um, I thought that was a long street a long time ago. And I know there were volunteers and told it, but there's so much um, frustration dealing with the board. Uh, this is where it is. We wanted to tell them.
I have it.
that as I say It wasn't. So they, they, they got a. Got done with this. district yeah growing up in Incorporate your one of the years Melanie It's
ones that may would have their
match and that are old Easy.
it's basically to of the
let me just
more like
consider I'm the house is 